What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So we've got another weekly rotation lined up for you guys and I've got some brand new stuff to the collection in here that really has me hyped. Some exciting niche. Uh, I have a cheapie that actually started my week that was fantastic. Gifted to me by my friend Chad from the channel of Gentleman's Journey. Just some real heat. And when I mean heat, I mean just fantastic. A lot of stuff that's on the unique side. Some stuff that's kind of more familiar and mass appealing. Like it was a serious week of some of the best smelling stuff I've wore in quite a while. So it's week number 221 in my weekly rotation. Stay tuned. Starting off on Sunday is two new pickups, the one that was gifted to me by my friend Chad, and another one that was gifted to me by Twisted Lily for a brand new release from a niche house. But starting off during the day was a Zorro Bright Visit. So this is a $14.30 ml. Seems to be Fragrance Net was like the only place to find it. He picked it up from Fragrance Net. And this cheapie smells fan-damn-tastic. Uh, very citrus, but green. Very green spicy on my skin. It doesn't really have that metallic tone, even though it kind of looks like the base of the bottle could be a chrome flanker of some sort. No, but very fresh, bright, citric, and like I said, fresh and green spicy is really the main thing that I get from this. It's nothing crazy complex or super unique, but it does smell really good, and it's super cheap. Hard to complain, really. Uh, kind of average performance. I got about five to six hours because I know somebody's going to ask. Nothing crazy, nothing super strong, not on the weaker side, but... Next time you're filling your cart and you're shopping at Fragrance Net, maybe check this one out if they still have some available. It's 14 bucks after the 35% off code. Um, if you can find a 37% off code, go for it. I haven't been able to find a newer one lately. So I have the 35% off code I've been using down there for you guys, though, if you want to check it out. But during the day, a gift from my dear friend Chad. This is a Zorro Bright Visit. And then when I got out the shower in the evening, this had just came in that day, and I did some testing like throughout the day, I had sprayed my arm even though I was wearing a Zara Bright Visit. And then I decided to give some more sprays that evening after my shower. This is brand new from Maison Crivelli. This is Tuberous Astral. It's a tuberose, tuberose fragrance, as you would expect based on this name. Now, this one's super unique and interesting. It's feminine because it's based around tuberose. So it's got that creamy white floral smell. But it's got a crazy amount. I was about to say hella. <laughs> well, it's got hella masculine notes in here. Might as well roll with it. Um, a lot of leather. Dry leather, dry woods. It's animalic, musky, a little bit of spice. Like, I've never smelled another fragrance like this. It is very unique, top tier quality ingredients. This is my second fragrance from the brand. The other one that I have that I love, a beautiful amber fragrance, Ombre Chromatique. This is special though. You gotta like tuberose. If you can't stand that or, or fear that it's too feminine for you, sample first. This is not a safe play at all. But this is a special scent. This is for one of those occasions in the evenings when you're going to an event, a banquet, uh, a special dinner, a party of some sort where it's a little bit dressier of an occasion. This would be something to really step out with. This has a class, elegance, wow factor, and show-stopping capability with the originality and just total different style of this scent profile with real staying power and oomph. This is a strong sillage. It projects hard off the skin, and it lasts a really, really long time. All of their fragrances are X-Traits. As far as I know, the two I have are X-Traits, so high oil concentration, thick cloud. This is a dense fragrance. Again, not a safe play here. Definitely try before you buy. But if you want something different and you happen to be a fan of either Animalix or, and you don't mind Tuberose, or you're a fan of Tuberose, you should really get your nose on this one. This is a special experience in my opinion. This is from Maison Crivelli. This is Tuberose Astral. Moving into Monday, this is back-to-back -back days of some brand new releases from some niche brands that are super impressive to me. This is, to me, superior in every way to its original that's flankered from. This is from M. Mikalef. This is Desir Toxic Lintense. I am such a fan of this fragrance. This is so, so good. You take the original scent profile, that smoky, earthy, green, cannabis, hemp note. You get that hefty dose of that kind of inky, tart, fruity smell of the black currant, some other spices, a little bit of woods, touch of sweetness. Now amplify it. 
and put a load of mint leaf in it. Start to finish, I get mint leaf. It freshens up the fragrance greatly. It takes what's a, an intoxicating, even inappropriate date night kind of scent profile, freshens it up, but intensifies it. It is a stronger fragrance early on. It dries down to the, it's the same core DNA. It still smells, smells like Desir Toxic, so it's very redundant to have both. But the mint leaf is the biggest difference in the scent profile, and it is a big difference, and it's from start to finish. I get similar longevity in about the eight hour range from this one, from the original, but this is a louder fragrance. This really pushes off of the skin. This is one of the better mint based fragrances I've ever smelled. This is one of my favorite releases of the year thus far. As far as niche releases, this is my favorite niche release that I've gotten so far in 2024. This is absolutely going to be, in my opinion, one of the best niche releases to come out this year. Last year, they did great. They had Gin Tonic and Red Colorado come out. Gin Tonic was absolutely one of my favorites. So, in Mika Lef, they've been doing some really good stuff. Parfums Mika Lef put out great fragrances. Obviously, I would encourage you to try to sample this one or get a small decamp somewhere first. Um, if you have the original, be very wary of the redundancy of having the Lintense and the original. But note that if you really love the original and you're totally fine with understanding that it's still at the base of it, the same fragrance with some drastic nuance change, you might want to look into this one. That's the only people I would say this is a safe blind buy for is if you just love to see toxic and you're like, yeah, I definitely need the intense. Yeah, it's a safe blind buy for those people specifically. But man, I'm super thankful the brand did send this my way. Um, I'm not eager and excited because they sent me a free bottle. I'm eager and excited because I love the way this thing smells. It is fantastic. I am on a mint kick, especially in the spring. And this is so much more of a daytime wear than it is just an evening wear like the previous version was. And I think you can get away with it in warmer weather. I think this scent profile, the enhancements and changes, makes it much more versatile than the original. So definitely worth checking out. If any of that sounds interesting to you, this is the new Emika Left Desir Toxic Lintense. And then I got the shower. This has kind of become my favorite fresh out of the shower fragrance. This is Happy Chopard's Lemon Dolce. Such a big fan of this one. This was subscriber and channel member recommended. Shout out to John Carlo. This was $14 and some change for this 40 ml from uh, Fragrance Buy down in the link below. I've had several people buy this off of my recommendation. They seem to love it as well. Sharp, fresh cut lemons. Has this bright white floral clean musk type of feel to it. It's a women's fragrance. Totally unisex. If you just want a lively, super fresh, watery fragrance to kind of just refresh out the shower, brighten your day, super hot day, cool you off. This would be the way to go. And my favorite thing about this, I always bring it up when I talk about it. This is not like polycarbonate or acrylic or plastic or anything. This is actually glass, this cap. It looks like it would be, you know, plastic or, or like I said, acrylic or something. Nope, that is glass. I love the aesthetic of this bottle. It's got a great sprayer and scent profile. It's fantastic. $14 out the shower. Happy Chapards, Lemon Dolce. Moving into Tuesday was a tale of two totally different scent profiles. One that's a very polarizing fragrance from Parfums de Marley that happens to be my favorite from the brand, that being Kalan from Parfums de Marley. Has this, uh, you know, racquetball, rubber ball kind of thing going on with blood orange and a bunch of like peppered spice. I had somebody in my scent of the day shorts video ask, why would you want to smell like a red rubber ball? You're taking it too literal, pimpin'. Just try the fragrance and you'd be like, oh, that's what he means. It doesn't just smell like a, like I, when I say rubber ball, I mean like racquetballs. Anybody that plays racquetball, that distinctive kind of rubbery smell that the, like if, at your gym, if they have racquetball courts, they probably have a bucket full of racquetballs. That smell. But it's not just that. Like I said, a lot of blood orange spices. There's a little bit of resins, some woods. It's... It's a weird description, I get it, but ever since the first time I smelled this, I think of that. So, sir, whomever you are, if you happen to see this, that's what I mean. Just get a sample and try it. I definitely had a carded sample before I got this bottle. Man, and look, it does have a little bit of a tie into Baccarat Rouge 540 because you'll see people talk about that on the internet, but it's faint. It's not a lot of it. You will get a little bit in the opening. It's drastically different as it settles and dries down. 
Uh, great performance. I don't find it to be highly synthetic like some of their other fragrances. Like Sedley's got a lot of Ambroxan. Percival's got a lot of that cologne note. Things And Ambroxan as well. Things like that. It's not heavy on the synthetics, though it's not loaded with naturals either. But it does smell like a quality, warm and spicy fragrance. Definitely worth checking out. During the day, my favorite from Parfums de Marley, Cologne. And then when I got the shower, this is pretty much all I've been wearing this fragrance for. And I get asked all the time about how do I feel about it. This is Valentino's Born in Roma Intense. It smells in the same vein of like Invictus Aqua with some subtle changes, nuances, sweetnesses and everything. Like I've had people say it smells nothing like Invictus Aqua. I don't mean one to one. I get some elements of it, a little bit darker. Like I said, sweet. It still has a lot of freshness to it. It's a great everyday wear. Blue fragrance kind of stuff, crowd pleaser, mass appealing, easy to get some compliments for the most part. And again, no guarantees you'll get a compliment, but stuff like this has a higher probability. Uh, that's what they're made for, for people, for you to smell good to others. Mission accomplished if you're wearing something like this. It is a really good fragrance. It's far from my favorite from Valentino, but when it comes to fresh metallic, kind of shower gel like, bubble gummy kind of thing going on. It's good stuff. For some reason, I gravitate to it as an evening scent to kind of relax when I'm editing at night because I do most of my video editing and uploading and rendering and all that good stuff in the evening. So out the shower, Valentino Womo, Born in Roma, Intense. Moving into Wednesday, I wore this during the day. I wore it again in the evenings. It's way more powerful in the evenings than I typically want from fragrances like this, but I've just been enjoying it so much. The new Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Beau Paradise Garden. Synthetic green, a little bit of an earthy spiced ginger, creamy coconut, a little aquatic, sweet, lightly powdered. Great performer. Uh, it's green meets tropical, the way I described it in my review. I quite enjoy it. I think it's an 8.5 out of 10 kind of fragrance. I still like the Le Parfum better, but it fits the line very well. I'm super happy with it. I was eager from the moment it got announced. So happy to have it now. Um, I would encourage you to click the link down below if you want to get your hands on it sooner than later and click notify me and put your email in because I did scoop this up from Fragrance Buy. They had it both sizes in stock for a mere minutes before everybody bought them out and sold it out. I was one of the lucky few. I don't know how many bottles they had, but I was one of the lucky ones that it was able to get 125 milliliter bottle. And I'm thankful to have it. Look, is it a must have? No. But if you're a fan of the Lebo line, might be a must-have for you. Just know it is synthetic. I've noticed online a lot of people complaining about synthetic. For those complaining about synthetic, I would like to introduce you to Jean-Paul Gaultier's designer fragrances. They're all synthetic. This must be your first Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrance if you're complaining about synthetic with it. I don't, I don't know. Um, I've also seen comparisons of like a Kenzo Ohm Intense mixed with Le Beau. To make this, that kind of makes sense. I see where they're coming from. I don't find this is all that woodsy because Kenzo Ohm Intense, very woody aromatic fragrance, but I can kind of get the drift here. Uh, if anything, kind of reminds me of fragrances like uh, Fusion Dissy, Fusion Dissy Extreme. I do have both of those. Love those. Great coconut fragrances. This is probably closer to the extreme. Um, but again, this is a greener fragrance, and that ginger. It's kind of like fresh cut ginger. It's not super spicy, super crisp, or super creamy, but it does have kind of that earthiness to it. Um, not a dirty earthy smell, but if you've ever cut ginger to cook with, you know exactly what smell I'm talking about. That's probably, in a heavily synthetic fragrance, that's probably the most realistic note of the bunch. But during the day and out the shower, I don't care what anybody says, I think it's definitely one of the best designers released so far this year, Le Beau Paradise Garden. Moving into Thursday, the ever so polarizing fragrance that I quite love it. I think it's got some great charm to it. I'll probably even put it in the thumbnail. I haven't made the thumbnail yet. But Raja Parfums Elysium, O oh Intense. This is not the Elysium for everyone, but this is definitely the Elysium for me. I'm a fan. Sour rhubarb, a little damp in the top, uh, laundered, kind of soapy smell to it, more leather than anything. Either of the other versions, less woody vetiver, though still there, but more of a leather accord, really comes out in this one. Still has that metallic citric smell. Um, it's the same formula, it's just totally rebalanced. Uh, all three versions of Elysium have the same note breakdown, they use the same oils, it's just perfumed and balanced differently. Raja Dove really does great work, I have to say. 
I can understand why some would not like this one at all, especially if you've smelled either of the previous two. It's a little bit of a departure. It's a more unique, slightly, if there's such a thing as a challenging take on Elysium, this would be it. And that in some ways does make it a more intense way to smell like Elysium. So calling it oh intense does make sense because most of the time people only want to associate the word intense or extreme with just like super loud, crazy long lasting. Like that's the only way it can be intense. No, there's an intensity to the aroma versus the originals. I, that's This is the way I interpret it. And I feel like if more people looked at it that way, they might be able to appreciate what's going on here a little bit more. But hey, teach their own. If you don't like the way it smells, you don't like the way it smells. I know I'm not alone in enjoying this one, but I seem to be uh, in the smaller percentage as far as people that like versus don't like. And it's, uh, you know, everybody's got different tastes. I get it. But again, I like it more than the Parfum Cologne. Uh, the Parfum's still my favorite of the three. I think that's a masterpiece. Uh, when it comes to freshies, that's like the greatest opening I've ever smelled. The Parfum Pour Homme. If you've never smelled that, look, it's expensive. That's an experience you should have. Get a little, get one email. Try it. Beautiful opening. And not a clone. Try the real deal. The real deal, magic. Mwah. Magnifique. This, a little bit of a twist and a challenge, but I quite enjoy it. My wife likes it quite a bit too. Elysium O Intense. And then when I got at the shower, I had just gotten this in. I had a shave, first and foremost, and went with Nivea Deep Comforting. This is kind of a bourbon vanilla type of uh, aftershave splash. And then I gave myself a few sprays of Grandeur's Pacific Woods, which is Invictus Intense with a big twist because it's very powdery, very woodsy, which Invictus Intense is neither of those. It's really sweet and has a whiskey note. Smells like intensely sweeter Invictus. That's what Invictus Intense is. So you take that and you make it powdery and add woods and then put this ridiculously good atomizer and you get one of my favorite clones I think I've ever smelled, honestly, because I'm more of a fan of clones with a twist than I am of direct copies. Because when I have the originals, I'll just wear the original. Give me a twist and a nuance that makes it slightly different. Manipulate the DNA. I prefer that, personally. That's the clones that I enjoy. So stuff like this, I'll reach for. I'll probably wear this more than Invictus Intense because I like the twist more so than Invictus Intense because I never reach for Invictus Intense. When I wear Invictus, it's usually Legend, Victory Elixir, or Aqua 2018. I couldn't tell you the last time I wore my bottle of Invictus Intense, but this... I wore it the night I filmed the video, hence we're talking about it right now out the shower. And uh, it kind of went pretty good with a vanilla base, because that's how you can kind of look at this. So out the shower, had a good shave, and went with Pacific Woods from Grandeur. Moving into Friday, oh buddy, what a pair of fragrances I have here. One in the evening, you probably wouldn't expect me to wear in the evening, but during the day, one of the most overlooked fragrances, because everybody wants to just go with Mont Blanc Individuel. And look, I get it for the money, it is a great option. And I know it came first, and yada yada, blah blah blah. But Creed Original Santal is fan damn -tastic. This is such a great fragrance. I had a decant. I'm lucky to have a bottle now. Had it for a little while. I love the, the hefty, spiced, woody smell with the fruitiness. Um, it does smell like Individuel. And yes, Individuel came out first to my knowledge. But that doesn't change the quality and blend of this being superior. It performs great on me. And look, this is... The metal cap this is a 2023 batch and i know people have been complaining about reformulations and weaker fragrances from creed for two or three years now not the case here eight or nine hours on skin easily with two hours of really good projection decent sillage where i get whiffs of it this is a good one man is this a good one i love when i wear this one i think you can rock this year round formal settings casual settings evenings daytime not the best in humid high heat Maybe just do two or three sprays because it, it'll be very strong in super humidity. But overall, I think you can rock it whenever. It's signature scent worthy kind of stuff to me. Beautiful fragrance from Creed. One of my favorites from Creed, actually. And it was nice to reach for it again. Another one White's a big fan of. During the day, Creed's original Santal. Now I got the shower. I had filmed the Phantom versus Phantom Parfum versus Phantom Intense video. It just came out this morning at the recording of this video. This is Phantom Intense, the newest flanker. I liked it so much. I liked it the most out of the three. I went ahead and gave myself two sprays on each side of the neck to go with the one that I had on my arm. Um, 
This has more of a sugared sweetness from that rum, but it's not overly sickeningly sweet, not to me. I've seen some people in that video talking about how sickeningly sweet any, you know, any one of the three versions are. Uh, to me, not so much. Um, a little woodsy, slightly boozed, very sweet, some citruses at the top. I think it's good. I think it's quite good. Honestly, this is going to go into that one of the best designers of the year for me. I mean, it's got potential to get knocked off by something else, but to get knocked out of a top 10, a lot of designers that I like more than this are going to have to come out. And we're not there yet. We're just in the beginning of March. There's still a lot of designers that I'm excited about to come. So there's potential for this to not make the top 10, but there's definitely potential for it to stay in the top 10 because I actually quite like it through one wearing so far. I'm a fan. This is the version of the quirky, goofy, gimmicky robot bottle Paco Rabanne Phantom for me. The Intense is definitely my favorite of the three without question. So if you weren't a fan of the other two, don't write this one off until you try it. Out the shower, Paco Rabanne's Phantom Intense. Finally, on Saturday, what I'm currently wearing, I have four sprays. It lasted pretty much all day. I still smell it on my fingers when I rub my neck like this. What time is it? It's 7, 10 p.m. as I record and speak on this right now. I sprayed this fragrance on at, uh, at 1 o'clock, so it's been on for about six hours now, and it's still, it's still going. It's all over my fingers from rubbing my neck, and it's, like I said, it's been there for six hours. It's still going strong. I would assume I got at least another two hours before it becomes a skin scent, at least, potentially more than that. I'm digging it has this black truffle note. It's sweet. It's got a peppered spice. The sage isn't overdone here. It's not too bright and aromatic. It's like a thick, uh, kind of rich, sweet, but not too sweet. Like, you got to like sweet designers. That's what it is with a lot of these, um, especially these uh, el elixir flankers. They're either really spicy or really sweet, sometimes both. Uh, in this case, it leans on the sweet side. So if you were a fan of the original, I haven't tried the original Cobalt. From what I hear, it's really good. The plum kind of jumps out. I need to try that one because the Elixir Flanker is really good. I do get a Fruity Nuance, even though they don't list the plum. That's probably that Fruity Nuance that I don't distinctively smell plum, but that's probably what I'm smelling with this one. I actually quite like it. This is another one that, until further notice, is hanging out in the better designer releases of the year. So far, we've start off, started off pretty hot in 2024 with a lot of these releases. I think 2023 was a great release year for fragrance, and it looks like we're starting off hot and keeping that momentum, and if anything, building on the momentum as we go into these early stages of 2024. So definitely worth checking out, in my opinion. The Elixir Flankers seem to never fail from brand to brand to brand, from line to line to line. So during the day, still have it on right now, Carolina Herrera's Bad Boy Cobalt Elixir. Now, as far as what I'm going to wear out the shower, I haven't picked anything, and I've been kind of debating on wearing this, so I think I'm going to go with Lanvin Lom. Been meaning to wear it again since I got it. Basic citrus aromatic, musky, nothing crazy, 90s type of fragrance. Smells good, a lot of lemony citrus at the top. What the hell? So that's what we're going to go with. Out the shower, I've been pulling the cap the last couple of nights. I think tonight's the night to spray it on skin. We're going with Lanvin Lom. Well, that was this week's rotation, and until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, because I do appreciate all the feedback. I love hearing from you guys. What did you guys wear this week? Definitely comment down below. Were you interested in any of the stuff that I wore? I'm going to try to have links to everything as best I can. Uh, some of the stuff will be out of stock. Just click notify me, especially things like Paradise Garden if you're interested. That way, when they restock it, you can get an email and try to jump on it and get yourself a bottle. And until next time, I will see if you get your hands on any of the stuff I wore this past week, and you give it a spray now. You might end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys.